We are going on the beat. Brought to you by ChevyDriveChicago.com. Someone who also was very busy at the trade deadline. Someone who covers the division. Fox Sports' Carmen Vitale. Hi, Carm. Hi, Ruthie. How are you? I'm good. I'm so happy that you're joining us. When you look at this division, Carmen, how do the moves each team made represent kind of what they're building or at least trying to build? Ruthie, why does it always have to be my division? I swear, I was busy at the trade deadline last year, too. <laughs> but this is the thing. They all have very different objectives. Each team, the Minnesota Vikings, are just trying to get through the season now that Kirk Cousins is out with an Achilles tear. They went out and got Josh Dobbs for basically nothing. And this is kind of indicative of the fact that they want to keep their options open. This allows them to still see if they have something in Jaron Hall, a fifth round rookie out of BYU. He will start this weekend. And then also keep the door open for the fact for a Kirk Cousins reunion. This may be the last year of his deal, but I don't know if it's the last we've seen Kirk Cousins in Minnesota because of how much Kevin O'Connell loves him. And the fact that he'll be on the wrong side of 35 coming off one of the worst injuries you could possibly have as a football player probably get him as a discount at a discount. So they're keeping their options open. That's what that Josh Jobs trade was indicative of. The Lions, I think I loved their trade, getting Donovan Peoples Jones to be a compliment in a in the wide receiver room. He is so underutilized in Cleveland, it was wild. And the fact that he was basically just doing cardio out there. Most of his routes, though, come from a wide alignment. So that allows Amon Ross St. Brown to kind of be himself and come out of the slot more often than not, which is kind of where he makes his bread and butter. Loved that for the Detroit Lions. And then you've got the Green Bay Packers shipping away Rasul Douglas, who is not only one of their best players on the field, but also one of the best guys in the locker room. He had become a leader in the locker room, had provided all of those intangible things that you need out of a glue kind of guy who guys came to for advice and pulling him out of that as the Green Bay Packers are still trying to get on track, especially defensively where they're underperforming. I don't really love that, to be quite honest, but you are looking towards the future. That was Brian Goode's main objective going forward. Goody is looking towards the future. That's his job as a GM. And then, of course, there was the Chicago Bears making the splash. And I think that Montez Sweat represents the fact that they don't think they're that far away on defense. And they wanted to be able to lock up an elite pass rusher and not have to overpay for one in free agency this way you give up the second round pick but now you have the freedom to negotiate with montez sweat hopefully get him a good get him a long-term extension done and do that at market value rather than having to pay and outbid every other team for a pass rusher that everybody needs in free agency so a lot of different objectives across the division but I think we definitely got a, a peek into how they each each team views itself right now. You brought up the Rasul Douglas trade. Aaron Jones was asked about Rasul being traded to the Bills. He had a very poignant answer. I want you to take a listen. He was actually sitting right here on this corner, and I just saw him and just like I already like felt it in my heart and just kind of like like not broke down, but we we start talking, we we both shed a few tears. It's just been it's been a long journey for both of us. Uh, that I told him coming in, I didn't know a lot of guys in the league or even like playing against guys. I played in Conference USA, so I wasn't a lot of guys that were making it to the league. So I met Sue um, pre like combine training and uh so we we i've known him since then we, he's seen my work ethic i've seen his work ethic seen the work that he's put in uh he's seen the work that i've put in he's seen uh when i not not when i didn't believe in myself but when i had doubts and i thought i was gonna like let down my parents different things like that so we just shared those moments and uh and i just told him I'm, i was proud of him carmen your reaction this is what I'm talking about with Rasul Douglas being such an intangible presence and wonderful presence in this Green Bay Packers locker room. He'd only been there a couple of years, but as Aaron Jones said in that clip, he had worked his way up to being a leader. He was someone that these guys leaned on, and it's someone that across, not even just on the defense, but clearly on the offense too. Aaron Jones plays offense. So I... It, it really shows you the humanity behind these trades. It's not as if Goody is going to the team and being like, hey, this is what I'm thinking of doing. I think I might get rid of Rasul and asking everybody's input. This comes as a shock to these guys. And I really appreciate Aaron, both Aaron Jones and Rasul Douglas kind of sharing that moment and letting people in on how hard this is, even though Rasul is going to be going to a contender now in Buffalo and could see some success because they need him to be on the field immediately. It's still hard. 
And I just, I really appreciate seeing that side of this because it, it's a good reminder for all of us. Does the Montez sweat trade say anything to you about polls, Kevin Warren, their confidence in Matt Eberflus and the defensive system that he's running? Ruthie, that was one of my first thoughts was that the Chicago Bears trading for Montez Sweat was a vote of confidence in Matt Eberflus, mm. especially if you want to keep Montez Sweat around. And, you know, Sweat said he's going to come in. He's going to get the lay of the land. He's going to kind of evaluate the circumstances. The last thing you want to do is pull the rug out from underneath him and switch up the defensive system on him. Now, a pass rusher is a pass rusher. Uh, I think that Montez Sweat could be – effective in any scheme four three three four you name it but at the same time there's something to be said for stability and continuity when you're looking at signing a long-term extension so the fact that this deal was done with the mind that montez sweat is going to be a player for years to come in chicago i mean matt eberflus is involved in these kinds of decisions because he's the one that has to coach them so i think that that was a vote of confidence in this system and allowing this system to continue to develop under matt eberflus Carmen, outside of Jared Goff, and you talked about Kirk Cousins a little bit, but the quarterbacks in this division could look really different next year or not. Where do you stand on the state of the NFC North quarterback? I do think that Jared Goff will be back and will, will continue to be in Detroit. I know that there was some question marks going into the season, but he's playing out of his mind. Yeah. Like I said, I think Kirk Cousins could still end up in Minnesota uh, when all is said and done, especially if the Vikings don't end up coming up with or finishing with one of those top five picks, those draft picks to get another quarterback. Um, and then with the Chicago Bears, I see this team moving on from Justin Fields. I've been saying that that's just kind of my inkling. That's my educated guess. I think that with the draft capital that they have, if you have the first or second pick in the draft, it will be hard to say no to another quarterback to make sure that you can bring him in. Don't forget, Ryan Poles and Matt Eberfus are not responsible for bringing Justin Fields in. And you kind of want that continuity if you're going to keep these guys around. So I think that that will be different in Chicago. And then as far as Green Bay goes, it's too soon to tell on Jordan Love. I keep trying to talk down Packers fans all the time. It's like it's a seven, eight game sample size. You're just it's not enough. And, and a guy that is be expected to fill these gigantic shoes in two Hall of Famers before him it's going to take a little while for that to take hold, especially when the things that you thought he could rely on, the offensive line, the defense, the run game, haven't been living up to expectations and you haven't really been able to rely on them either. So I think Jordan Love will still be the quarterback in Green Bay next year, and, and I don't think that they're going to make any drastic moves when it comes to acquiring a quarterback. Um, so it, this, this division could look a little different, but I think the biggest difference is going to end up being in Chicago. Okay, I have a league-wide question for you. Could this be okay. the year that a wide receiver wide receiver wins the MVP? AJ Brown, Tyreek Hill, both on pace to break Calvin Johnson's single-season receiving record. Carmen, could this be the year? I go back and forth because yeah. the last time a non-quarterback won MVP, it was 2012, I believe. Adrian Peterson was the one to win MVP. This has been kind of widely accepted as a quarterback award, the league MVP. At the same time, I feel like this season we're not seeing the quarterback play that we're used to seeing just in totality, whether that's because of injuries, whether that's because of teams making transitions to younger quarterbacks. We're not seeing kind of those breakout, those stellar performances. I think the closest guy right now, as far if you're talking about league MVP at, from a quarterback perspective, probably Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson uh, is playing beyond his MVP numbers in 2019 currently. And then I also think you're sneaking guys, even like Jared Goff in there, she says very quietly. Yeah. Because he's going off. You look at the stats, you look at all of the things that Detroit has been able to do offensively. And it's because Jared Goff is making that engine go, coupled with their offensive coordinator, Ben Johnson. But if those are your top kind of leading quarterbacks going into the MVP conversation, I have to think that opens the door for some of these skill players when they are dominating and doing so much for their teams and impacting their teams so heavily uh, that maybe we could. I, it's, it's anybody's guess, but this has been a quarterback award for a long time, so it's going to take a lot to change that. Carmen Vitale, she covers the NFC North for Fox Sports. Thanks for being here, Carmen, and thanks for being my friend. <laughs> thanks for having me, and thanks for being my friend. <laughs>